<laughs> Afternoon, evening, everybody. It's KB5 MIQ, big boy. First off, I'm going to apologize once again for my audio visual skills. This is the third time I've shot this video today, and I've tried to shoot it without shooting it in reverse where I can see what I'm doing, like on this phone right now. And I've screwed it up every time, so I bear with me, it's going to be in reverse. But I, I'm going to get a camera eventually. I'm still doing these with my phone. So, anyway. Uh, I want to do a little bonus video, a uh, bonus giveaway. It's a Hey Ham Radio Cat. I want to do a bonus video uh, this week. Wasn't really planning on this. I went to a uh, main trading company Saturday morning, Easter weekend. He had a big Easter sale going. And I'll show you what I bought in a minute. But he had a special going for the First 10 hams through the door, got a free dual band talkie, the TYT THUV88, and I won one of them. Hadn't been taken out of the box yet, programming cable, charger, battery, manual, warranty card, everything's still in the box. I've got more talkies than I need right now. Uh, these are inexpensive diesel talk i think richard's got them 39 dollars on the website but i'm gonna give this one one of y'all uh just like before shoot me an email and i'll have my email posted on the subject matter of this video name address call sign put giveaway talkie giveaway or ht giveaway in the subject matter and i'll get you entered i'm gonna let it run probably the end of the month eight to ten days we'll do a video late next week and i'll announce the winner and i will get it shipped out to you if you're not a ham yet you fix to take your license i don't have a problem with you entering either just send me your name and address um what i went up there to richards to get was a new mic for my 897 and i think i made a touched on that in a video or two so i'm gonna Go ahead and I'll tell you the whole reason why I got a new mic for it. Um, I've Ever since I've had that radio, I've tried to use heel headsets. And I had a Traveler, the first one I used, and I wore it out to push the talk, just wore out on it, and I quit using it. Then I bought a single-side Pro set. Uh, I had noticed something with that microphone, both of them, matter of fact, both of them. They work good. Uh, but when I was working DX stations, I was constantly having to repeat my call sign. Now, I'll admit, KB5 MIQ with this Northeast Texas accent is kind of hard to understand. And also, I've said before how I actually phonetically spell mine online. I mean, on, on the air. But I did notice I was really having to uh, repeat myself a lot. Well... Cody, the WD5DLX, the youngest one of our crew, had told me that he said that right that mic sounds slightly muffled. And we got to experiment one night switching mics from the stock hand mic to that. And he sent me some recordings, and sure enough, it sounded slightly muffled. And for about the last six months, I've been using the hand mic and uh, I haven't had to repeat my call sign there as much. But I kind of wanted something a little easier to use while I'm writing here at the desk and all that. And Richard has the uh, MH70, MH70 ASU desk mics. Uh, as good a price as any place you'll find them online. And uh, that's actually what I went up there to buy. So I've got a good buy on it there at, M at MTC. Uh, not knocking heel. Uh, both of those mics, I just went and bought. You know, I... Bought the right connector, and I bought the right one for Yesu Kenwood, and uh, I never asked anybody how well they worked. I figured they'd work, but you know, I got thinking back in the 90s, uh, it was pretty common for brand new HF rigs sold then not to even have a mic with them. There were a lot of different mics out there. People were using all different kinds of aftermarket mics. Well, I talked with Richard, and I talked with another ham, and kind of consensus was that Hill and Yesu don't really go together that good. Um, now, I know for anybody says, go to Hill website. He's got an everything Yesu corner on there. He does. Doesn't cover an 897. I actually called and talked to a, Yesu, to a Hill rep, and they even helped me with it. 
I said, the mic works. It's under, it's audible, audible, audio is understandable. Uh, very, it's, it's pretty clear, but it does have a little slightly muffled sound on this Yaesu rig. So that's why I went and changed it. I'm not getting rid of the heel mic, and I'm not knocking heel. I'll probably hook it up to this Kenwood uh, two meter I got down the road. That's, that's the reason I went to MTC, and that's what I come back with. I'm really impressed with that uh, Yaesu desk mic. Other issue I was going to, or subject I was going to cover today is uh, for new guys trying to set up a station for the first time. And we've talked in other videos about types of antennas and types of feed line and towers versus push-up poles and ground mounted and everything else. I don't know if I've ever really covered this, but this is something you guys need to think about when you go to set a station up. Uh, single band antennas versus multi band antennas. The big difference in the two, for every single band antenna you got, hey, ham radio cat, you got to have a run of coax for. Right now, my station has got eight runs of coax coming to it. The pass through I made here at my window. Eight different runs of coax coming to my station right now for different for different antennas I've got out there. Some people may not be able to do that. Some people may not want to do that. So if you use a multi-band antenna, you're going to be able to uh, run it one run of coax. I've always been a little partial single-band antennas, uh, but that's just my my thinking. I like to build antennas, so that's one thing I like to do with them. Either way you go was fine. Uh, biggest reason I brought that up is from posts I see on social media, people asking about certain things like that. And then you got these guys who posted a picture of their install where they've hired a helicopter to lower a huge multi-band Yagi on a tower or they've got a cherry picker rented or hired to come in there and then drop a big, huge antenna on top of a tower and I don't want these new guys to think that they got to do that. You know, well, that's nice if you got that kind of money. I don't. <laughs> I sure don't. But you don't have to have that. And you can still talk around the world. I've never had an antenna any higher than 50 foot in the air. And I've never run an antenna on anything but a push-up pole or ground mount. And I've got like 45 of the 50 states confirmed. And I've got over 50 countries that I've worked uh, cards, QSL cards from. And I don't do ham radio every day. It's just a hobby with me or if an emergency comes up, somebody needs it, I'm on it. But they say you don't have to do that. It's fine if you can, but you don't have to. But what you, what you guys need to consider is your particular situation. I can't tell you what to do, nor can anybody else, although a lot of hams will try to. You ultimately got to make your own decision up because none of us know where you live, how much space you got, uh, if you live in any kind of zoning requirements, or if you live in the dreaded HOA. You know, my particular situation, I live in the country. I own the land all around my yard. I got an understanding why. I got antennas and coax running everywhere. It doesn't bother me a bit. I'm able to do that. You may not be able to. That's where a ground mounted multi band antenna comes in, such as a Hustler, Hustler 5B TV series antennas, or any other ground mounted multi band, or whatever else you want to come up with single band dipoles, whatever. But plan your install out and you what you think about everything if you're going to be able to rotate it or if you want to push up pole uh how many runs of coax you got to have whatever now i'm gonna tell you a hundred foot tower with a helicopter installed yeah it'd be a lot of fun but i've been a ham since 91 i've never run anything other than a push-up pole and had a lot of good contacts with it uh, 
one of the last last giveaways winners michael st Clair, sent me a picture i'm gonna peg it on here at the end of this i appreciate a minute and i ain't got one for chris howell yet but I, I know i will and i'll uh i'll get it put on a, on a later video y'all remember main trading company paris texas uh great place for ham radio gear and if you got on social media, follow the main trading company Facebook page and watch his videos because he usually gives a coupon code out. So when you order online, save you a little extra money. Uh, ham radio related Facebook pages, ham radio flea market trading posts, ham radio, amateur radio Elmer's, Texas amateur ham radio, all good pages for information. Club pages, four states amateur, Cowtown Amateur, Shreveport Amateur, Dallas Amateur Radio, Farmersville Amateur Radio. Good information pages. Farmersville also still does a first Sun Saturday every month sidewalk sale at South Lake Park. Information will be on the end of this uh, video, and plus it's on their page. Uh, let's see. We still do our 10-meter roundtable. On Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday nights, last night, Jeff and I had stations from uh, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, and Brazil check in with us. That band's been opening. We've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, my email is posted on my QRZ page. Also, I'll have my email in the subject matter for this giveaway. I appreciate everybody, appreciate everybody who subscribed to the channel. This is KB5MIQ Big Boy, 73.